Hello everybody! For the first time, I'm not saying long time no see, so that is an achievement! Today I'm going to be talking about working at a camp in America for the summer. I did it as part of my round the world trip and it was so amazing, but I just remember how many questions I had before I left, and so I'm going to do my best to explain as much as I can about it now. So the easiest and in my opinion best way to go about working at Camp in America is to go through an agency. The two top agencies in the UK are Camp America and CCUSA. If you Google you'll find a whole load of other agencies as well. I went with CCUSA because it had great reviews, um, it allowed you to pick a no flight option and because my like I was in America as part of my round the world trip I didn't need a flight included and it was cheaper than Camp America so for me picking CCUSA was a no-brainer but ultimately they all do the same thing. So first of all what is the process of getting placed? I'm going to try and answer this as simply as possible but it's probably going to end up being quite long-winded so I'm sorry about that. The first thing you've got to do is the questions process. You basically answer a load of questions about yourself, your personality, your hobbies, your interests, your work experience, you will need to provide work references from work experience that you've done. They will also ask you to provide a video, this is to show the camp directors why you should work for them. This isn't absolutely necessary but it will definitely help you get placed. I will link my application video down below, I don't think it was very good but Maybe it will give you some ideas if you're struggling. When you have filled in all this information, you will have an interview with one of the representatives from the agency. I think most of them are face to face, however I know that Grace and Cheryl had theirs on Skype. You don't need to worry about these interviews, they're very casual and informal and it's basically you just going over everything that you've written down in your application and the representative will put it in an attractive form for the camp director to judge you on, I guess. <laughs> you will also discuss with them in your interview the type of camp you want to go to and the kind of role that you want to do when you're at camp. And whilst all of this is happening, you're going to have to pay a whole lot of payments. Woo! Anyway, when you've completed your application, your payments and your interview, then you are ready to be placed and your work will be sent round to all of the camps in the US uh, ready for a camp director to place you. They could place you straight away from seeing your application or they might ask for an interview or you can do what I did, I went to one of the recruitment fairs, I went to the one in London and basically there was a load of representatives from a load of camps around the US and you get to talk to each of them about their camp and they can actually hire you on the spot which is what they did to me so that was really handy, I didn't have to worry about oh will I like the camp that I'm getting placed at because I was able to speak to them about their camp before I got placed, if that makes sense. The final steps of the process is just to sort out your flights, if necessary, a few of your first nights in country, and also your visa. Because it is a working visa, you do have to have an interview at the American Embassy. So as you can see, it's definitely a long-winded process. You definitely have to be proactive, but I mean, going to camp is a big deal, so I promise you it's definitely worth the effort. What are the different types of camp? So I wouldn't have known or necessarily even thought about this, I kind of just assumed that all American camps were the same and they were all like parent trap, but in fact all the camps in America are actually incredibly varied, so there are some specialising in a particular sport, in sport in general, in performing arts, there are day camps, there are underprivileged camps, the list goes on. As it turns out I was actually in a camp sort of similar to the parent trap in that it didn't specialise in anything and we all had a group of kids for an extended period of time, but even that period of time can vary vastly, so you can have day camps, my kids stayed for I think three and a half weeks at a time, Cheryl's kids stayed for a week at a time and Grace's stayed for up to nine weeks at a time. What are the different jobs that you can have at camp? So the most common job someone from the UK will do at an American summer camp is camp counsellor. A lot of UK staff will be encouraged to specialise in an activity. For example, I specialised in gymnastics coaching and both Cheryl and Grace specialised in horse riding. However, there is the option at some camps to be a general counsellor, which is normally where you're looking after the younger kids and you go through all the activities in the day with them. Another job that you can do at camp is support staff. 
so you could be in the kitchen, you could be a nurse, you could be outside in the gardens, or you can have an organisation role where you're just working in the camp offices. What is the day in the life of a camp counsellor and what are your duties? I'm going to tell you what my day in the life was like because I was at a general camp so I think it will be quite relatable but please understand this won't be the same for every camp. So 7.50 was the wake up call. There were three counsellors to eight kids in our cabin and it was our responsibility to make sure they were woken up and ready in the breakfast hall at 10 past eight. I would always get up before wake up call though just to get myself ready and showered so I didn't have to worry about myself when chasing after the kids. After breakfast we'd go straight back to the cabins and basically just get ready for the day ahead so we'd be checking the kids bags to make sure they had everything they needed for the activities they were doing that day, we'd make ourselves dressed and we would get our cabins looking spotless because we had them checked every day. We then had Morning Cove, which is kind of just like an assembly, and then there would be three 50 minute periods of activity. I obviously stayed in gymnastics for all these periods, and there would be different lots of kids coming in each time, and the kids in my cabin would be going to their different activities of choice each day. Then we would have lunch, followed by rest hour. During rest hour, one counsellor for every few cabins was on duty, and just make sure the kids were safe as they were in their cabins so doing something like reading or making friendship bracelets. The rest of the staff were off duty for that hour. We could go hang out, we could use the Wi-Fi, or we could go sleep if we wanted to, which we definitely wanted to. Then after rest hour it was four more activity periods and then we would be back in cabins getting ready and freshened up for dinner. Before dinner though we would have a whole camp cove, which is like in the morning but the whole camp and like a big assembly where we'd have like announcements and shows and all the rest then we'd go for dinner then after dinner would be more cabin time to get ready for the evening activity which was normally some crazy game or it might be a talent show and then it was time to go to bed lights go out at 10 p.m and while the kids are getting ready for the bed the counsellors are getting ready to go out like in rest hour there is one counsellor to every few cabins who's going to be on duty for that night um, the rest of staff are off duty until 1am. We'd normally get a well-deserved drink from the local bar, a well-deserved treat from Walmart, or if we were super tired, which we were a lot of the time, we'd just go up and use the Wi-Fi. Every five days we had what was called an S day. I still don't know what the S is for, but basically we would go to a theme park or we transform the camp into a giant carnival. Only half the staff were required for S days, which meant that every 10 days were the counsellor days off. You could do whatever you wanted on the day off. At our camp, the days off would start before dinner of the day before and finish at 1am the next evening. The norm for my camp was to go buy some drinks and go camping in the middle of nowhere normally by a river or a lake. My camp was in Maine so there really wasn't much going on. Then the next day we would just hang out, eat a whole lot of food, hang out some more and just enjoy each other's company. So if all of that sounds appealing to you, you may be wondering how much it costs and how much will you earn? So all the payments are made during the application process and the payments will vary depending on who you book with and when. Like I said, CCUSA is cheaper than Camp America, especially if you book early. In general though, it costs between 200 to 300 pounds for the whole application process. But then there was this one cost that threw me. I don't know if this is me being stupid, but I was charged an extra 160 pounds to get my visa. I actually had my interview at the American Embassy in New Zealand because I was already halfway around the world by the time I realised that I was going to need this interview and it was super confusing being a backpacker because I didn't know like when I was going to be at what time and I had to book an appointment and it was all very confusing and then throwing an extra £160 just made me so confused about life in general at that moment in time. But anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Just be aware that there can be extra costs. In terms of what you earn, I'll be honest, it's not much at all. I think in my whole 10 weeks there, I earned $1,500, which really isn't very much. 
However, if you are going to camp for the money, you're definitely in the wrong job. You can take your money out whilst you're at camp though. We were allowed to take money out on weekly instalments and I most certainly took advantage of that. Are the UK councillors in the minority or the majority? Again, this completely varies depending on what camp you go to. At my camp, there were about 10 UK councillors and about 200 North American councillors and so we were most definitely in the minority. However at Grace's camp it was the complete opposite and the majority were British. I think I preferred being in the minority because first of all Americans and Canadians appear to like the British accent so I guess that was just a starter bonus. But also I loved experiencing and immersing myself into a whole new culture. At first glance, you wouldn't think there would be much of a cultural difference between the British and Americans. However, the longer I spent there, the more I sort of noticed the cultural difference. Not a bad one at all. I'm a really observant person, find it really fascinating observing people's behaviours and their personality and feel free to disagree with me. But I felt like Americans take more of a hands-on approach to situations and they live in the moment a little bit more and everything's about a bit more here and now whereas Brits tend to take a step back, look at the bigger picture and sort of assess a situation before acting upon it. I don't know if I'm making sense right now but the moral of the story is I really liked being in the minority because I really liked observing what a difference living on a different side of the Atlantic Ocean would make. Can I travel after camp? One of the biggest parts of working at Camp in America is the ability to travel afterwards. I believe the J1 visa allows you to travel for 30 days either side of your work at camp. Because I travelled in America for two weeks before camp and three weeks after camp, I got myself an ESTA just in case. I'm still unsure as to whether I needed that, but I'm glad I had it because it did seem to all work out fine. But yes, you will more than likely find the friends you make at camp, mostly Brits, but even some Americans, will want to travel after camp. With this in mind, I didn't plan my travels after camp, which I'm so glad I didn't because I found that the majority of the Americans who were working at our camp actually lived in Florida. So all of us Brits afterwards, we flew down from Maine to Florida and we went to Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Boca, Orlando, Gainesville and we didn't have to pay a penny for accommodation so it was amazing. I believe from what I've heard from others and from my own experience that the average time to travel after camp is about three weeks. So if you do have to book your flight home before you leave camp, I would allow roughly that amount of time. Would I return to camp? I would absolutely love to return to camp. However, I'm not going to. Camp was an amazing experience, but it is now something that I've done. It's something that I can tick off the bucket list. I always like to try and experience something new as much as I can and as cliche as this sounds, you only live once and you're only young once and even if your next adventure isn't going to be as enjoyable, it's much more fulfilling to have lived a life of oh wells than what ifs. Wow then, that was Christiane's inspirational quote of the day. You are welcome. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you more of an insight onto what working in American summer camp is actually like. It was a really fantastic addition to my gap year and I thoroughly recommend it to anyone who has a lot of energy and a lot of patience for kids. I have no idea what my next video is going to be on, but it's going to be bloody good. Yeah, bye.